Okay, let's pull back the veil behind the most fundamental principle in the universe. Everything is force and motion and inertia and acceleration. There is only one field and three field modalities. It is ignorant to think that electricity is one thing, magnetism is another, electrostatics or dielectricity is another thing, and gravity is another thing. It is as idiotic to believe that as it is to think that water is one thing, steam is another thing, and ice is another thing. I'm uh, working on the fourth edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. I have hundreds of pages of notes and endless amounts of material to add to the book, which is free, by the way. I'm not selling anything. Let us take a premise and let's take a look at something and see what we can comprehend so far as the golden section. But let's get specific as so far as nature's most fundamental principle, magnetism. Here I have a simple cylinder magnet. It doesn't matter if it's a cube magnet. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll place it underneath my buddy's invention, the ferro cell. You will see immediately the formation of a hypertrochoid. Let me turn off the lights and let you take a look. And let's explain what it is we're seeing. And then let's uncover the veil of what we think magnetism is. We're looking at a puppet show here. Humanity is still in intellectually at the level of children. Children show up at a puppet show, the only thing they see is the puppets. We're fascinated by quote-unquote magnetic attraction and quote-unquote magnetic repulsion. But these are the puppets, the strings, the, that which gives us interest. We make and invent all sorts of things that run off of uh, magnets and magnetism. But there has never been throughout all human history, and I own every book ever written on magnetism, a definition, the denotation of what a field is by anybody, ever, period. I'll add that to the fourth edition of the book. Secondly, no one ever, even the great idiots of general relativity and quantum mechanics, will ever tell you that anybody's ever come up with the explanation for what magnetism is. Instantaneous action at a distance is beyond comprehension because it is not particle based. It is literally not physical, therefore the realm of physics and theory regarding uh, fields, specifically magnetism, has no quantification. All Maxwellian field equations have time differential plug-ins. A field is not based in time, nor is it in space. It is as it is and is an autonomous modality, a field perturbation. Now let's discuss what magnetism is. Let's unveil it really simple. Okay? Talk is cheap, right? I need to think, well, this idiot's going to talk. Take a look at what we're seeing here, spirograph pattern. Exact same thing we see here in the pine cone. What we also see in the sunflower, you're seeing the hypertrochoid. This spirograph-like pattern, which actually follows the phylotaxis, the golden ratio, technically the golden angle, of 137.5077 degrees, or 137.5 degrees. Exactly what you see here. Now let's explain magnetism a little further a little more simply. Okay, let's not get complicated. Here we have a quote-unquote North Pole. Here we have a quote-unquote South Pole. A magnet does not have poles. Here we have a puppet show and here we have a puppet show. The only thing, and most people never think this way, they have linear minds. We think, well, a magnet is magnetism. We have magnetic attraction. That doesn't mean anything. Descriptions are the playthings of children. Okay? Descriptions are not explanations. So let's take a look at the puppet master behind the puppet show. Here you will see one pole. Here you will see another pole. You see this bright line right at the center? That is the dielectric inertia plane. That is the puppet master pulling the strings that define this magnet. Now let's work retroductively. It's an ancient platonic methodology to come to the nature of something, the truth of matters. We have induction, deduction. There's an ancient hardcore methodology that's been lost thousands of years ago. It's called retroduction. It's a fascinating ancient Platonic, ancient uh, Greek and Indian methodology to come to the understanding of what something is. Let's first understand what a magnet is, denotatively. Before this was turned into a magnet, i.e. magnetized, it was nothing other than a ceramic lump 
that is chrome-plated, neodymium iron boron, doesn't matter if it's samarium cobalt or ferrite, then it was magnetized. What is the denotation of magnetization that therefore denotes this as a magnet? Field coherency. Everything is a magnet. We know from applying incredibly powerful fields that were able to levitate frogs, levitate strawberries. This has been around now for 15 or more years. With enough power, you can magnetize anything and make it levitate in an incredibly powerful magnetic field. If we had enough power, we could levitate grandma. It probably would scramble her brain, but we could still levitate her. So that which denotes magnetism, specifically a magnet, is nothing other than field coherency. There's no differentiation between that and that which uh, separates out a light from a laser. A laser, light amplification, a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation is nothing other than the coherency of light. That's why a 5 watt light bulb is useless to read by, but a 5 watt, light, uh, 5 watt laser will burn a hole in your ass. Okay? And I have a 5 watt laser. Right? <laughs> so what denotes this as a magnet? Field coherency. What are we looking at here? This is the puppet master right here, the line of dielectric inertia. Around it we have a hyperboloid and we also have a torus. The torus that denotes spatial divergence, centripetal convergence, centrifugal divergence. We have a system that works in perfect harmony of simplex field mediation. What is simplex field mediation? Saying simplex field mediation is no different than saying pulling the plug on your bathtub and water will drain down the tub. Let me uh, use these moray patterns here. We have a clockwise and uh, we uh, actually have two uh, counterclockwise. And I'll show you the other one in a second. Let me mine these up perfectly. I found out in my formula, which is my discovery, that magnetism, the loss of inertia that defines magnetism, this is inertia. Okay, right now we see only black. There we go. Only black. The loss of inertia is a universal constant, and this is my discovery, and I have it tattooed on my wrist right there, 1 over, the, one over 5 to the power of negative 3. Some people will say that was a number, 5 cubed or 4.23606. No, it's an expression. Here I'm going to show you in an instant, I'm going to separate these two moray patterns at a ratio of approximately 0.381. Okay? And instantly you're going to see a pattern the same as we saw underneath the magnetic viewing film right here showing the dielectric plane of inertia and the two bulges of the torus that defines the magnet. Let's take a look and let's separate them here. You see that? Plane of inertia. Here we have one pole, here we have another pole. Mother Nature is so simple that she is completely perplexed and confused all of humanity as to the most fundamental principle of cosmic mechanics, magnetism. You see that? That's it. Now let's show this inversely. And remember what we saw underneath the ferro cell here? We saw this. Exactly right. This, this, 137.5077. This is nothing other than the interference pattern of the mediation of pressure between centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. Okay, now let's explain things. So you have to work in steps of progression here for people to understand what a magnet is. This is nothing other than a ceramic lump. What defines this as a magnet is one thing only field coherency and the incommensurability of what is present here. See there is no plane of inertia located right here at the center of the magnet. Well sure there is. We have a north pole here and a south pole here. What most people don't realize is that if I were able to slice this magnet like a hunk of salami a million billion trillion times right across the axis of north to south I would have a million trillion magnets. In each little slice would have a North Pole and a South Pole. This is undeniable. This is irrefutable. This is an ancient premise that only the Greeks understood and has become a lost term since the ancient Greeks. Lucky for me, I translate ancient Greek. That term is incommensurability. It means point nonspecific incommensurability. It means it is everywhere and nowhere. Kind of like a hologram. Point nonspecific incommensurability means that every point within the subject 
is an identical replica of the entire whole. Think about that for a second. The plane of inertia is not located here, it is forced here. Simplex field pressure mediation. All fields work no different than water pressure. You dig a trench, a hole, the water will flow downhill. That's pressure mediation. Okay. Let's take a look at the magnet here. Let's wait for the image to develop here. You see the hypertrochoid? You see that? You see this? You see this? You see that? This is how simple Mother Nature is. This is simplex field mediation. Now, there's something else you need to understand. What are we looking at? For every spot that there is a white line, that means the light is being shot out to the camera, to your eyeball, correct? Obviously so correct. Every place you do not see light is where the light has vanished. We have additive interference and we have subtractive interference. The real nature of it is is that every bright line we are actually seeing centrifugal divergence at its max. Every place we are seeing not any light we are seeing uh, centripetal convergence. Same thing here. I reverse this. You see this is uh, counterclockwise. You see this is clockwise. I place these together. You see that? Exact same damn thing. It's irrefutable. It's undeniable. Mother Nature doesn't know what the hell math is. Math is a system designed by stupid humans to count beans. There is no... Think about this for a second. First you'll think I'm crazy, but when you think about it, you'll realize how right I am. There is no damn math in the universe. Absolutely none. Even the golden ratio, the golden section, is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. It is literally the multiplicative of principle and attribute. 1, 1. That is why the first two numbers of the golden section are 1 and 1. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, etc., etc., etc. 8, 13. There is no math in the universe. Absolutely none. Mother Nature is a hairy armpit chick with a hemp loincloth. Uh, barefoot with mud on her feet. There is no calculator used by Mother Nature. There is no math in the universe. None. Absolutely none. Math is so very important for so many things. But it is only bean counting. At the most fundamental level of cosmic mechanics, we have fields. Fields work off simplex pressure mediation. Okay? No different than saying pulling the drain on your uh, bathtub, water flows down. It also creates a vortex. What you see here is the drain. You see this black hole right here at the center? You see a dr You are seeing the cosmic mechanics of a bathtub at the level of the universal constant of the entire universe. Why is it black here in the center? There's absolutely no light here because this is the point of centripetal convergence. These white lines, these striations that you see, the only reason you're seeing any light at all is due to centrifugal divergence. Magnetism is reciprocating, reciprocating, you look that word up if you don't know what it means, reciprocating from one quote-unquote pole to the other quote-unquote pole. But a magnet does not have poles. The poles that we think of that defines a magnet are merely the puppets and the strings of the puppet show. Intellectually, humans are stupid children that only see the puppets. Here, we place this magnet on its side, the same as we did under the, uh, under the uh, feral film. Here you will see, turn the light off in a second. The plane of inertia, either pole. The same thing we see underneath the magnetic viewing film. You see that? This is also the same thing you saw a few minutes ago when I placed these together. This is the same thing. This is the most fundamental principle of cosmic mechanics. The absolute most fundamental. Let me actually 
Here we go. Plane of inertia, one pole, another pole. Let me place the magnet over top of that, which it doesn't want to sit. Let me place my finger there. There you see it. This is the Puppet Master right here, the plane of inertia. By the way, if you place two magnets together, whereas they become one, and you place a, uh, a, uh, a gauss meter between the two, one magnet here, another identical one here, there will be absolutely zero reading on the gauss meter. How was that possible? At the center of the Earth, if you're able to stand there, which of course you couldn't, there'd be zero gravity. At the center of gravity, we ignorantly think there would be most gravity, right? The center of something where, is where the most of something is, right? No. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. At the center of magnetism, where the plane of inertia is, and this is a quantifiable, a quantified empirical fact, there is no magnetism at this plane of inertia. Magnetism only exists here and here. There is absolutely no damn magnetism. Not my opinion, conjecture, beliefs, or feelings. It's a hardcore damn empirical fact. There is no magnetism here. Period. None. This. Do you see this pattern? This phylotaxis? That's the golden ratio, 137.5077. The most fundamental principle of the universe, magnetism, which is the loss of inertia. This is the plane of inertia. A magnet is not a magnet. What the hell does that mean? A magnet is a coherent, dielectric, incommensurate field coherency, just like a, light, a laser is to a light. Okay, if this was not magnetized, it would just be a worthless, stinking hunk of uh, ceramics, uh, neodymium iron boron. It wouldn't stick to anything. It would just be a ceramic hunk, like a marble. Except it would be cylindrical. <laughs> this, field coherency. We call this a magnet. A magnet is not a magnet. Well, that doesn't make any sense. A magnet is not a magnet. What that means is that a magnet is a dielectric, coherent object that us stupid human beings, well, not me anyway, <laughs> we are watching the puppet show. But we cannot see the puppet master that is driving the amazing polarity that we're so fascinated with. Magnetic attraction, repulsion, AC motor generators, magnets are in everything. You can consult some of the largest sellers of magnets on Earth. This always shocks people when I tell them this. You can go to their website, Frequently Asked Question. The largest magnet sellers on Earth. Of course, I know now. With my book, I know. And uh, my book is free, and you can know, know now, too. They will tell you on these websites that sell endless billions, sometimes, dollars of the magnet. We, we don't know what magnetism is. Ultimately, we're just guessing. Every seller of magnets on Earth... This amazes people. That's impossible. Magnets are in cell phones, computers, your camera, every damn thing. No. Until now, we had no idea what the hell a magnet was or how it worked. See, fields have no quantity. Fields are not particles. Atomism of GR and QM has heretofore never been able to explain magnets, and it never will. But I was the first. Yes, this tattooed lunatic that you think is crazy has actually figured out 100%, not partially, not speculatively, not, you know, ah, oh, guessing, you know, good guesswork. No, I've completely figured out every aspect of magnetism. Every last damn aspect. I'll prove that in the fourth edition. I'll have a lot more to add to. Uh, it's going to have to be a fifth and sixth edition. There's just so much to add. This hypertrochoid that you see here, every time you see a bright line, that is centrifugal divergence. This point, black spot right here in the center, center that's the max point. You are literally looking at the bathtub drain of cosmic mechanics and Mother Nature herself. This is the drain. This is literally a drain because it is a coherent field device for the reciprocation of magnetism. Magnetism is, as Faraday coined it, the dielectric field. Cosmic mechanics are so much more simple than you ever dreamed imaginable. The most fundamental basic principle of the entire universe is more simple than 1 and 1 equals 2. It's even more simple than that. 
I never would have believed something like that was possible growing up, but it's true. Thanks for watching. Catch you later, and goodbye.